Last time we were binary searching. We were binary searching what last time. What are we time. searching for this week? We're still binary searching, but we're going to binary search ever so slightly better than we did before. That's the idea. So it was pointed out into comments to me that under some, you know, languages and computational architectures, there'd be a bug in the binary search code that I wrote. Now, I mean, I would, I would like the record to show that there isn't a bug in my code, obviously, uh, mostly because I programmed it in Python. Um, and Python has a slightly different way of dealing with numbers. But let's look at this bug because actually this was quite a serious problem. This existed in Java, for example, for about nine years, nearly, te nearly a decade, this bug was there, which would have thrown errors in a certain se set of circumstances where this binary search that you program but makes absolute sense doesn't actually do what you think it does under cer some circumstances. It's an edge case that you haven't spotted, right? There are always going to be things like this. So there's a much safer way to code it where you can get around this problem. But this happens a lot with code. You write your code, you do a lot of tests, everything works fine. You just didn't test those exact set of circumstances that caused the bug to appear, right? So actually, one of the phrases you see a lot is recreate the bug, right? Which is what, where when someone reports there's a bug to you, if you can recreate it, that's the first step in finding it. So let's remind, remind ourselves what we were up to. We, we had some boxes, which I'm going to draw again, but we're not going to spend too much time talking about binary search this time. We're just going to talk about the way we calculate which box to open next. So if you remember, we have some variables in our binary search that represent where we are currently looking. Right? So at the beginning, we have our left point over on the, at the start of your array and the right point at the right-hand side of your array. And then later, maybe you've decided it's only in this section, so you have your midpoint somewhere over here. Right? So let's suppose we have our left point here and our right point up here. What we need to do is calculate our midpoint. And we do that so that we can decide, well, okay, we're probably going to open this box. We open this box and decide which side then we need to look on, or maybe we found our number. So the formula we used for this was m is equal to l plus r divided by 2. Right? And then what we did, we did the floor function, which says the nearest integer below this. Now, in Python, this will always work, because in Python, as far as I know, in Python, we don't have the same restrictions as we do in some other languages where numbers are a fixed size. But as mentioned in the comments, quite reasonably, uh, in the last video, there are certain circumstances where this will fail. Right? And that's because what we're doing is we're doing this very large intermediate sum between the left and the right, and then dividing by two. Which basically means that temporarily our number gets very large, and then it gets reduced back down into correct range. So what this should do is give us an m value of l plus r over 2, which will be the average, which is m, right here. But imagine your data is, let's say, 1 or 2 billion elements in length, right? which doesn't happen to me very often, but it does happen sometimes. Um, and it would be much more common if you were working for a large organization that had a huge amount of data. Now let's imagine that each of these numbers is over about 1.2 billion or something like that. So the theoretical maximum size of an array in Java is about um, 2.1 billion elements, roughly speaking. That's the maximum size of a, of a signed integer. And if, we have, if we're looking up at the top end of this array, then our L and R values are going to be close to that value. When we add them together, they're going to overflow over the maximum integer size. So if, if L plus R is over this value of 2.1 billion, you'll get what we call an integer overflow, where your integer becomes so big that it wraps back around and you get a very, very large minus number because of two complements. Perhaps the most easy one to understand is that, yes, if you add together two positive numbers that are too big, they're going to come out looking like a negative number. Right now, if you try and index your array at m, where m is a hugely minus number, you're going to get an error, right? An out of bounds exception and your, um, your code is going to crash. Right? So, if you don't ever have that situation, then this will never come up, right? And that doesn't mean necessarily that you should always just use this code, but it's worth noting that you might have a set of circumstances where one billion is way out of the range that your program would ever produce, in which case this is not really a big deal. And this is probably why it didn't get spotted for many years, because it just didn't come up very often, right? And then when it, when it, was, eventually, it, when it was eventually found, it found there was textbooks that were wrong, Java was wrong, huge implementations were wrong, because there's not really anything wrong with this. It just doesn't work because of the, the restrictions on integers. So what would be a better way of doing it? What we were originally doing was L plus R divided by two. So if you had um, an L that was here like this and a, and a bigger R because your R is over on the right hand side over here, what you would be doing is putting this here, adding them together and taking the midpoint, which would be somewhere sort of here. Right? That's, that's kind of the idea. That's your average. 
But yeah, if you put that there, it'd probably run off the end. Right, of runs the off the end of the screen, and we've got our overflow, and then we're all over here on the. Yeah, exactly. All right, so you know the paper works. We should stick with it. What we're going to do instead is we're going to do R minus L. All right, R minus L. So what would that be? That would be the difference between R minus L here. I could probably draw it over here. So then what you do is what? Half of that and then add it to the L. Exactly, right? So we divide this by two to get this bit here, right? And then we add the original L back again. So this is R minus L over two, and then we add back L, right? I'm not sure if drawing it out like this worked, but hopefully that makes so sense. So it's a slightly more complicated sum, but hopefully it keeps us in bounds, right? Yeah. So what we've done is we, it keeps us in bounds because we've never, R is always bigger than L in our, in our binary search, or they might be the same, in which case that's the last step. But essentially, R minus L is never going to be a negative number and it's never going to overflow over the end of a 32-bit integer, right? And that avoids this problem, okay? So I actually uh, implemented this in Java and we can actually see it crash and then we can fix it, right? Okay, so I just recreated my Python code in Java because I wanted to recreate the bug and in Python, it has arbitrary size integers, which means that basically when your integer becomes 33 bits, it doesn't wrap around, it's just 33 bits from then on. Right? Now that has a performance hit, but it's not much for, for normal use. And uh, so that's a good way to program in some ways, but actually I quite like the restrictions sometimes. And for example, in things like cryptography, it's very important that your data is always the exact size that they're expecting, because otherwise the mathematics won't do the same thing at all. Right. And so actually for encryption algorithms, it's always very, very strict about exactly how big your data is at any given time. Now, so I've created binary search again, so we can see the same algorithms we had before. And here is our offending line. So I'm going to say bad. That's not, that's a Python comment, not a Java comment. Excuse me. Right. So this is bad, right? And it's bad because if theoretically, if we have very large indices left and right, our midpoint will, our, our intermediate sum will overflow. So, I'm going to create an array of a length of length 1.2 billion, which is long enough that we're going to overflow if we're near the end of it, right? Because the left and right values added together will be larger than the biggest size of integer we can handle. Someone pointed out in the comments very wisely that why not just create an array of consecutive numbers from one up to the length of the array? Right, well, one fine. Out. If you want to be really clever and smart about it, sure. Or we can wait here for 10 minutes while we drink coffee because this sorting algorithm takes ages. Fine, I take your point. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating an array of length 1.2 billion. I'm then just going to make every element in the array its own index, right? So essentially the first number will be naught, the next number will be one, all the way up to 199 million. No, anyway, uh, yeah, Does. 1 billion, 100, anyway, so on. So if we run this and you'll want to skip through the build process, you'll find that there is no error, right? Uh, because there's nothing wrong with creating an array of this size. So if I output binary search of, let's say, using our array, and we're gonna search for the number 17, which we know is in the array because, uh, 17 again. I don't think there's any real actual significance in the number 17. Um, so if we run this, what should happen is it prints out true because we can find a number. And it does. Right, good. Now, suppose we remove 17 from the, uh, the array. So all I'm gonna do is in front of this line, I'm going to say array at 17 is going to be 16, right? So what I'm doing there is just saying there's gonna be two 16s in a row, which is not ideal, but it, it will be fine. If there's no longer a 17 in the array, this should return false. Cut to the bit where it says false. False, right, so it's working. So our binary search is working. Now what would have happened is someone implemented this based on some textbook, it works fine, they considered their job done for the day and they went home, right? And then nine years later, someone goes, well, hang on a second, right? So let's now look at what happens when we're not looking for 17, we're looking at a number right at the far other side of the array where the numbers get much bigger. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, okay, do a binary search for the number 1 billion, 190 million, and let's say, uh, 17. oh yeah, all right. <laughs> Is that the right length of number? We'll soon find out. So I'm gonna run that and we'll see what happens. Right, we've got an exception, which is kind of, funny enough, what I wanted to happen. So our index of minus a billion and something is out of bounds for this array, which is obviously out of bounds because it doesn't allow negative indices. So why has that happened? Well, what happened was at some point we were looking at this far end of the array and L and R added up to be a number more than 
1.2 billion. So now let's fix our code and see if we can do a bit better. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this line away. Good. And we're going to say, okay, we're going to do L plus half the difference between them, right? Which is still the same exact result, but we haven't had to add them together. So we can do right minus left divided by two, okay? Like that. And that should perform exactly the same. It should find 17, it should not find 17, it should find this number, but hopefully won't crash this time. True, it found it. And if we take that number away, we should get a false. So if we say array of, I'm gonna copy it because I don't think I can type that a second time. There we go, something like that, right? This allows us to keep them the in consecutive order. This should return false. There we go. So the binary search now works, but it also works for any numbers in your array, even if your array is up to the maximum size that Java allows, right? which, is, which is nice. Right? Now, if you actually look at the Java source code, you'll find that this, this bug has been fixed as of about 2006, something like that. So it was seen quite a while ago, but this bug did exist for quite a long time. You shouldn't just use it all the time. You use it when you're doing more lookups than you are sorting. Right, so if you, you know, maybe you sort your data at the beginning of the day. For you may want to come up with a new one and say, should this belong to group one or group two? So before actually going there and then doing this synthesization of them, could I...